Hi, I'm Jason Samuel, chaplain here at St. Paul's Senior Services in San Diego. Gathered here today for the Sunday worship and I invite you to join in with us. Let us take a moment to gather our thoughts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. I invite you to join in with me as we offer our song of praise, the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. For you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, Increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading for the Sunday is from Paul's letter to the Romans. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, for you are a stumbling block to me, for you are getting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, 
and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Today, our Gospel lesson from Matthew continues exactly from where we heard last week, from last Sunday, in that Peter was the one, of course, who acknowledged Jesus when Jesus was asking him, who do people say that I am? Then he asked them directly, who do you say that I am? And Peter got the answer right. And in that, there was this revealing of who Jesus is. And Jesus is continuing his teaching as he's going along through his ministry, again, of being with the people, of touching, of healing, of bringing about forgiveness and reconciliation. And his teachings are strong. And during this time now, we hear today they've moved on. And Jesus began to teach his disciples. And he starts with a very unpopular word to them. He talks about that he must go to Jerusalem. And that ties into the very ending of last week, where we heard Jesus told them after he said, okay, you're hearing these things, you're beginning to understand them, but don't tell everyone, don't tell anyone. It's because, really, it's found in what this first sentence tells us, that Jesus says he must go to Jerusalem, that it is actually the will of the Messiah, this suffering servant, this Lord and Savior, who is to go to Jerusalem to face his own passion, to face death, betrayal, and then ultimately, though, when God has this final word through the resurrection of his son. Now, all the, the disciples here, and especially again Peter, who speaks out right away after Jesus says, these things must happen. My own people, my own leaders will reject me. But do not be afraid in all of this. And Peter says, no, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen. But Jesus takes him aside and says, no, Peter, you do not understand. You do not understand. You are thinking, you're putting your mind on what you think of earthly things and the earthly kingdom of God. But I'm talking about the kingdom of God that God intends and the type of Messiah that God wants and what is needed for the world. Now, it was hard to hear that. And so, again, then Jesus then goes on to say, if you want to become my followers, here's what I'm telling you that is necessary. If you want to follow me, he says, you've got to deny yourself and to take up your cross and follow me. You've got to follow in the way that I am going to go. And you must do that. If you really want to save your life, you must be willing to lose it. All these things that are counterintuitive to us in society and sometimes as human beings. He says, you know, what do you have to gain? You don't have anything in yourself, but it is God. And he ends in this gospel thing about saying, for the Son of Man will come. And, uh, and he says, there are some of you standing here who will not taste death before they see the man coming in his kingdom. There's another clue there to what Jesus is talking about. You will truly only understand why I am who I am and what God is doing in this new kingdom of God, this new gospel, this good news I'm proclaiming. You'll only understand that when you understand my death and resurrection, because he says some of you will be here. And the, Jesus isn't speaking about at the end of the age, which will come. He's speaking about coming in his kingdom, that the kingdom will be fulfilled as he, after his resurrection. And then they will see and they will understand and know. Now, this all leads back to him saying, you must follow me. You want to become my, you want to be my disciples? You must take up your cross if you want to follow me. Now, today we all ask, no matter where we are in our lives, how do we live into following Jesus? And we know a lot of different people come to different conclusions about the best way to do that. 
But I think as we turn to Scripture over and over again, it gives us such a strong indication of what that may be. And particularly today, the Apostle Paul, who understood and understand did understand what the kingdom of God was to be as he proclaimed the gospel of Jesus, both to the Jews and the Gentiles alike. He is writing to the church in Rome, and this is exactly where he stopped also in last week's reading, after he said, present yourselves a holy and living sacrifice to God. And so he actually speaks to what Jesus says, what what is it to be my followers? What it means to take up your cross and follow him? He says these things that many times this passage is read and it sounds so wonderful the way things should be. But let us be clear, it is pretty hard to do at times. He says, make sure that your love is genuine. Don't just say, oh, well, we love everybody. But if you don't treat people that way, then you're not doing it. Let it be genuine. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. All of these things. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Not in fear, but in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to those who are in need. Extend hospitality, not to your friends. Extend hospitality to strangers. Think about what we are dealing with now in our own society and culture. We have people who are walking on eggshells in the amount of fear they have over the pandemic and those who might be the ones who might expose us. We often find scapegoats instead of taking our own responsibilities. We have in our world right now so much unrest. We continue to have people being killed and in our society unjustly by those in our legal system. We have to be willing to put down in the example of our lives a, a witness, both in our words and our deeds, of what Jesus says. Do we extend hospitality to strangers? And then even more so, he goes on to say, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Feed them. Give them something to drink. He says, live in peace as much as you can with all people. So, love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. Now, that's hard. It's hard. And if we say otherwise, we're probably not being realistic because no one likes to be treated that way. But right now, we have an opportunity of those who seek to follow Jesus, that if we want to take up our cross and follow him, we must be people in our everyday lives in any way we can, how, what we say, and what we do, to let our love be genuine. Let it be sincere and not also where it has exceptions. It must be without exception. We must not be afraid of the other. We must not escape goat others. We must embrace those who are ill, the sick, the frail, all those as well. Mm -hmm. And in the end, by living in the way Paul was telling these Christians in Rome, if you're going to follow Jesus where you are, you need to learn to walk in the way of the cross, which is the way of love, which is the way of hope, which is the way of life. Because inevitably, it all leads to resurrection, which is truly life. Now I invite you to join with me as we offer our prayers and our thanksgivings. And especially you'll be invited to offer yours. And on this Sunday, let us, of course, especially remember those affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and their loved ones. And also for those who are suffering in our own state here of California from the many fires and tragedies. And for those who may be affected by hurricanes let us remember to pray for those for strength and for perseverance. Let us pray for the church and the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world.
guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in his eternal kingdom. I invite now your intercessions. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I invite you as to pray the prayer that our Lord taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all of our understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And may we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Again, thank you for joining together for worship on this Sunday. And uh, you will see my name and my contact information. And we always invite any of you, whether you're residents or staff, to feel free to contact myself or any of the chaplains at any time. And we look forward to hopefully seeing you soon. And we pray always for your safety and your health.